Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it's time for an unboxing and assembly. It's been a really long time since we've done this. I have to thank William Jackson for sending this to me. This is the G.I. Joe Retro Collection Walmart exclusive Cobra Fang helicopter. I have the vintage 1983 Fang here, just so we can look at them side by side. It's a a little dusty. I also don't have the missiles attached or the red roll cage because those are a pain to attach and keep on. But, you know, we got the general idea. There are some significant differences, I understand, between this original Fang helicopter and the current released Walmart exclusive Fang helicopter. So let's, uh, let's open this one up, put it together, and put it side by side and see how it stacks up against the original Cobra Fang. I have all the tools that I might need to assemble this guy all right here, so we should be ready to go. I also have my glasses so I can actually see. Let's set this one aside for a moment. One thing that is different about this current, I think this came out in, what, 2021? Uh, this current retro thing is that it comes with an action figure. It comes with a pilot, which the original the original vehicle did not. Uh, so uh, let's open this and let's start by cutting the tape at this end because this just feels like the right end to open this end. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, so we have cut the tape. It is now no longer sealed. It is unsealed. Uh, we are opening it now. And there we go. I'll try to get give you guys the idea, the full feel of what it's like to open this thing up and take it out and put it together. Uh, there is a there's a tray. There's a cardboard tray, and let's see, where's the Okay, it looks like it goes this way. So let's pull. Yeah, the tray goes this way. Uh, it's not open at the front side, which is interesting. So let's pull this out and I'm going to uh, close up the box again. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the box here real quick. Um, vintage inspired artwork, but obviously updated to reflect the toy that you're actually going to get in the box. Uh, we've got a photo of the toy here and a figure and we have a file card. Unfortunately, it's one of those uh, modern retro file cards with a whole bunch of different languages and very little um, actual content to it. So unfortunately, that's what they have to do with file cards when they're printed on the box like this. I would prefer to see file cards as inserts inside the box so you can have a full file card in each language. You know, just print on both sides and put more than one in there. Otherwise, you have to do something like this, and it looks ridiculous. Let's set this box aside and see what we've got. We have a sticker sheet. We have uh, some uh, copyright and disclaimer information. We have a very small assembly sheet, and I can tell from just looking in the box here, there's not much assembly to do here. Uh, so. That is mostly going to be used for for the sticker, the decal instructions. Set that aside. Let's look inside the box. It's all secure in there, so no rattling around. But as you can see, the box is uh, pretty big for what you get inside. There is the, the body, the helicopter blades, the bomb that goes on the underside. There is the with the missiles and then around on this side there is the figure and it looks like it's going to take a little work to get all of these um, off because there are some plastic ties on each one so I'll pause this just for a moment and uh, and take all these pieces off so we can put them together. These parts in the box seem to be pretty easy to remove with the, the nippers just cut those plastic uh, these plastic ties off. There's that. There's the bomb that goes on the underside. We have four red missiles. Uh, none, I can tell right off the bat, none of these parts will fit on the Vintage Fang. They have different 
uh, slots or holes for pegs. Looks like they attach in totally different ways. Although the the holes for the pegs on these red missiles are tiny and may be just as difficult to attach to this modern fang as the missiles were to attach to the vintage fang. So that's interesting. That may not be an improvement. Now I've got to get the figure out. And am I noticing something that is a little unusual for a modern G.I. Joe action figure? He doesn't seem to have a figure stand. Most modern figures come with figure stands. You know, these they have the, the name of the character printed on it. Um, this one, unless it's hiding in the box somewhere, doesn't seem to have one. Okay, let me see if I did this adequately and I can pull this guy out. Oh, his helmet comes off. Okay, he does have a removable helmet. All right, all right, I got the guy out. Let's, let's put his helmet back on. We will examine the figure later. I'm going to set him over here for now. All right, and then there's this plastic piece that just kind of holds the figure in place. And that is it. That That's empty. Nothing left in there except for this little plastic piece. Okay, let's set this aside then and do the... Well, I've got lots of little plastic... Um, there we go. Little plastic ties there. Okay, now, so here is what we've got. There's the main body. There's the uh, blade, the four missiles, and the one bomb. I can tell how to put this together without looking at the instructions, but I guess I will anyway. Uh, yes, I have confirmed with the graphic on the instructions how to put this together. It's quite simple. This has a mushroom peg. Looks like it pegs. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna press down on it like this because that could break the the skis, the skids. So I'm gonna hold it and press it on. And there, there it goes. It clicks. It rotates. It is not that smooth a rotation on the blades. Uh, I mean, it's okay, but there's a little bit of resistance. The vintage fang has very little resistance, and those blades really spin. Next. Next, we just attach the missiles and the bombs. The missiles, I think, will be the most difficult, so I'll do those first. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it on this side of the camera, but I will turn it around so you can see what I've done. Yeah, I already hate these. I already hate these. Look, this is maybe the worst part of the the vintage thing, and they have they have not improved it with the modern. These pegs are tiny. I feel like I'm going if I try to attach the second missile, I'm going to knock the first one off. So let's try. Uh, man, I I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Ah, and if I press too hard, I'm worried about breaking the landing skids. They do have a little bit of flex to them, so hopefully not. But I got I got one missile attached, and getting the next missile attached is a matter of lining up the holes with the, the very, very tiny holes with the very, very tiny pegs. Ah, and that, there it goes. I knocked off the first missile. I'm going to show all of this. I'm not going to edit any of this because I want you to see what this experience is like and decide whether you want to have such an experience yourself. Okay. Oh, nope. Almost got the second missile on. But, like, pressing the missile on causes the, the landing skids to flex a little bit, which causes the other missile to fall off. It, like, squeezes the pegs uh, until they pop out. I, I, may, I may give up. I don't want to give up. I want to do this so I can show you what this is like. This may be a longer video than I anticipated. 
because I'm not cutting. I'm not editing this. You guys need to see this. We're, we're not even at the point yet of getting the stickers on. This is just a matter of attaching the missiles. This should be relatively e easy. It's not really even assembly. It's just attaching the missiles. Missiles which, you know, if you were playing with this as a toy, you would take off and pretend to, to fire at at the enemy in battle. But once you fire them, do you really want to go through the trouble of putting them back on? This this is not an improvement. This is not an improvement on the vintage. I'm, I'm frustrated. Okay, I have three of four missiles on. Can I get it? Oh, that is so, so difficult. Okay, I think I got it. It, oh, well, not very solidly. No, no, I don't have it. Ah! The top missile almost came off. I tried to press it back on. And, of course, I knocked off the bottom missile. I hate this. Oh, there they go. The top missile's off now. Now, I have to get these missiles on without knocking off the missiles on the other side. I'm not cutting this. I'm not editing this, Hasbro. This is, this is why... This is why Hasbro will never send me anything to... to review. This is why I will never have any sponsorship deals with Hasbro. And... and that's unfortunate because I like Hasbro's products. I like what they are doing with G.I. Joe. Not everything, but I like a lot of it. But when I get something like this, where simply putting on the missiles is an ordeal, I can't not point that out. And if assembling a toy makes me feel angry and frustrated i am not gonna hide that from the camera no i don't have it on yet i don't i don't um i've got to line that up and then i've got to i think i think lining up the back peg first is the best way to do it but there's no good way to do it okay okay four missiles this should be a bit easier. Um, this just has two two pegs on the bottom. Just push that in. And there we go. That's fully assembled. Now we get to put these on with the help of this instruction sheet. We have seen in the past that these uh, sticker instruction sheets have not been 100% accurate, so I'm curious how accurate this is going to be in helping me put these on. The sticker assembly is usually the most zen part of this experience. Unfortunately, it's something I have to do on this side of the vehicle, and I have to turn it around to show you the progress. But let's do it. Unfortunately, it looks like there are stickers that have to be put on the missiles. I do not want to take the missiles off to do that because... Uh, then I will want to smash this thing, and I don't want to do that to a lovely gift that was sent to me. Thank you for this. Please don't um, let my frustration with Hasbro's engineering of this thing uh, make it seem that I'm not grateful for fuck's sake. Um, grateful for the gift. I am extremely grateful for this. Um, I... Uh, I, I needed this experience. I needed to see what the experience of putting this together was really like. And I could not have done that without uh, the generosity of a viewer. So thank you. Not only has that viewer helped me by showing me what this experience is like. Hopefully he's helped you as well to see what it's like and to help you make a choice on whether or not you want to buy this thing and put it together. 
All right, so I'm putting the stickers on the red missiles first because they're, uh, that's going to be the biggest pain, and I wanted to get it over with. I want to get it over with. All right, that is... Why is it upside down? I don't know. Don't, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just put it on... Just put it on. Okay. So these are flat stickers, of course, going on a round object. So, of course, that's going to not be easy. And, of course, the miss... I have, I have just gently, gently touched the, the sticker onto the missile, trying to put on no... put no pressure on it whatsoever. And this missile still wanted to fall off. Next, let's try to line it up. Try to put the missiles on basically in the same spot on each missile, if possible. But honestly, if if it's too difficult, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother. See, the right thing to do would have been to put the stickers on before put, attaching the missiles. But, ah, didn't know there were going to be stickers on the missiles. Of course, I, sh I could have looked at the box. The box shows stickers on the missiles. If I had looked at that first, I might have made that choice, but it's too late now. It's too late now. But there's stickers on those missiles. Now let's go through this again on the other side. Um... These stickers are die cut, but they could stand to be cut a little bit deeper because they can still be a pain to peel. There we go. So, what happened? Oh, of course, of course the missile fell off. Okay. Hang on, I've got this sticker off of the sheet, and I don't want to lose it. So, one thing I don't care for is that this uh, black box on the missiles on one side, it's um, facing toward the rear, and the other side is facing toward the front. Don't care for that means the missiles will not be uniform. If you put them on the same side of each missile, that would make it uniform. But when you actually attach them to the... If you do, it did that, and you then you attach them to the vehicle, then the stickers on one side will not be facing out. So to have the stickers facing out on both sides yeah yeah of course of course by putting those missiles on wait where's the hold on okay i hate this i hate this i don't care if this is a long video you need to see this you the, this is journalism right here this this is yeah new york times call me this is news you know this is this is hard-hitting journalism right here, investigating the engineering of this toy vehicle. See, like, you press it on, and you get it on, but it it does it's not firm enough, it's not on firmly enough for it to stay on with even very gentle pressure, just moving the thing around. And I know this is a problem with the vintage Fang as well. I know that it is. I pointed that out. But this was issued in 2021, not 1983. And you've got an opportunity. I mean, you've changed it anyway, right? You've changed the body. Like, look at the difference in the, the body shape between these two. Look at them. So you've changed it anyway. So why not fix this. Why not fix this if you're going to change it anyway? Okay. 
Yep, missile is trying to fall off. When I just barely place any pressure just to lay the sticker on. So we have missiles successfully stickered and I will now try to get through the rest of this process without touching any of them. What's next? Oh, of course, there is a sticker on the underside. That'll be a pain. It looks like all of the Cobra Emblem stickers are the same. That's helpful, actually. So it doesn't really matter where we put these. Each one can go in any of the spots where there is a Cobra Emblem. Come on. There we go. Come on. There we go. Now... Let's put this one on the tail fin, like so. There's that. And although I'd like to work on the tail fin a bit more, I actually think I need to put the sticker on the underside. There's a sticker that's supposed to go right here. That looks like it's going to be a pain to do. So let's let's do the difficult parts first. Are you the type of person to do the easy things first or to do the difficult things first? I am a difficult things first kind of person. I like to get the hard stuff out of the way so then I can breeze through the easy stuff. I'm actually uncertain if that is, in fact, a better way to do things. Because what can happen, what often does happen, is you get bogged down doing the difficult stuff. And you never get to the easy stuff. Hold on a second. Okay, we've run into a problem. So this sticker is supposed to fit right there according to this instruction sheet. But this instruction sheet on that spot does not have the molding, the molded details that the actual vehicle has. And there's not enough room, there's not enough space to put it like above that. The only space there is is to put it like way down here so that's what I'm going to do. Otherwise, I would have to place this. And it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in that little um, uh, that little shape there. I'm going to put it down here because it's the only place it's actually going to fit. There. There's that. That's in the wrong place according to this. According to this, it should be up here, up here, in other words, right there, but you cannot put it there. Genius! Genius! I love it. Next, um, let's put the, the Cobra stickers on this bomb thing, one on each side, then let's move on. These stickers are not numbered. On the vintage blueprints and assembly instructions, the stickers were numbered and the diagram would have the number for the sticker pointing at where it's supposed to go. And I like that because even though you can identify a lot of these stickers visually based on this, this is not always accurate, and sometimes, visually, some of the stickers look very similar. Another thing it helps, if you have numbers on the stickers, is that you can go through this and go through this and make sure you haven't missed any. That's particularly important with these modern stickers because a lot of these are white on white. 
So it would be very easy to miss one of these stickers on on the actual sticker sheet. So, what's next? So there's a crap load of Stay Clear stickers that are supposed to go on the propeller on the propeller blade. I'm using this more as a help to see where they go because here it's just um, on the profile which doesn't show you the top of the blades, where, which is where you're actually supposed to put these. So let's figure it out that way. Huh? Alright, it looks like... Alright, this should be a... Alright, this is supposed to be like the... This is supposed to be the leading edge of the blade, and this is supposed to be the trailing edge of the blade, and the Stay Clear stickers are supposed to be pointed toward the trailing edge of the blade. Got it. Got it. Let's see let's see how that actually works in practice. It uh, looks like there should be one, two, three, three of these stickers per blade for a total of six. Man, these they are tiny and they don't want to come off the sticker sheet. It's been a long time since I have assembled a vintage G.I. Joe vehicle out of the box. They're getting harder to come by, you know. And I, I, would, not, I would not open a sealed vintage example of something that's rare. Wouldn't want to do that. There are people who collect vintage sealed vehicles and if, if there's something that's rare I'd rather it go to them that's not something that I typically do if it's not rare though I don't think it hurts anything to uh, to bust one open and take a look at it but nowadays even the ones that are pretty common are becoming harder to come by and the prices on them are getting a little ridiculous I mean guys they're they're not rare they are not rare there are many many of them floating around out there okay all right one two three stay clear stickers on the trailing edge of the helicopter blade, three more on this side, and then we've got some red stripe stickers that go on the kind of the nearly the outside tip of the blade. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, one actually came off relatively easily. Let's try to put it close to the same spot. Uh is on the other blade. It will not be perfect. If I wanted to make this perfect, I would break out a ruler and measure each spot. But, as old Sandy used to say, it's good enough for the girls I go out with. I'm gonna eyeball it here. That's two. Now, three. Am I getting this in frame? Try to keep it in frame. There. Third and final. Like so. Okay. It's maybe too tiny to see, but there you go. Six stickers on the blade. There we go. Now, we're going to need two more stickers on the propeller blade. These should be easy. These should be easy. And if these, for any reason, uh, are too long, these could wrap around the blade. So that would be okay. It, it's okay for, for these red stripe stickers to be a little bit imprecise. So there's this. It goes like this. Um, hold on, I've got to pull this a little closer so I can see it a little better. Trying to get it straight, trying to get it straight. All right. Yeah. There's that. 
one more time Boop. on this side and this does mirror some stickers that are on the vintage one so that makes sense uh, next Come on. Like, oh, 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 so close, so close. These vinyl stickers are a little more forgiving than paper stickers, which meant that I could peel that back up and replace it. That is, that's as good as that's gonna get. So, all right, propeller blades are, are done. Next. All right, let's look at, from my perspective, this side next. One thing that I noticed right off the bat is rather than have the red plastic roll cage over the engine, which I do not have attached to this one, it's in a box. Um, it has, it's just a painted on red stripe, which means it can't pop off, get broken, or get lost. Uh, I think I approve of that. I, I, I don't think I have a problem with that actually. Okay, let's do this side. Let's try to find that one. This is what I'm talking about. These four stickers here, two are larger, two are smaller. Which one goes where? Which one goes where? I need to see if I can figure that out. On the instruction sheet, they're the same size, but on the sticker sheet, they're not. I, 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 okay, I think, I think the smaller one will go on, well, hold on, okay, we got another problem, because it looks like some of these smaller stickers are supposed to go right here on the fuselage, but on the instruction sheet it looks like there's plenty of space to put that there on the actual toy there is a rivet detail right there right there right where you're supposed to put the the sticker i've noticed on the the prototype that they photographed here that rivet detail is not there so of course they could put the sticker where it belongs on there on their prototype but on this on this that's not going to be so easy all right let's figure it out let's figure it out i think the small one should go in front and it will be it doesn't it, it also isn't the way it appears the the sticker is not how it appears on here either because See, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. If, if I do it the way that it shows on here, then it'll have both small stickers on one side and both large stickers on the other. I'm gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it that way, which means I've gotta spin it around. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do it the way it's instructed here, even though it's, ah, even though it's kind of wrong. This is a tiny, tiny sticker. Let's get that. Let's try not to put my fingerprints on it. This goes here. Yeah, it's going to cover up a couple rivets. It's going to cover up a couple rivets. What can I do about it? Nothing. Nothing. And there isn't really even a space near it to put it. Well, there is. There is, actually. If I put this in the wrong spot, there is, there's enough room for it. But here's the problem again. If I put both of the small stickers on this side and large stickers on here, there's not enough room in that space. So, all right, new plan, new plan. I'm putting the small stickers here, which is the wrong spot, but we're doing it anyway. Let's straighten that out, straighten it out, straighten it out. Uh, let's 
There. Now, that is terrible. That is awful. Can I fix it? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So now, what I think I need to do is to avoid covering up rivets which would not provide a good flat surface for the sticker I need to put the sticker in a different spot so and the only way that works is if let's see yeah as if the small stickers go here which is not where the instructions say to put them but once again on one of these retro vehicles the instructions are not correct you you actually can't do it the way the instructions say to so there's that I, i'm there's that i want to i want to s focus on this side and try to get this side done so let me focus on this get that done and then i can turn this around and you can see the results. This is genius. This is genius. So just to show you very quickly. Ah, ah, jeez. Okay. okay, that was terrifying. To show you very quickly, this Fang uh, 76X3-6 sticker that goes on the side here, it's actually impossible to put that on without it covering up some of the molded details there, which means the sticker is not going to uh, sit flat. And on the prototype box, it does actually have that sticker going over some of the molded detail in their prototype. You guys know that doesn't work, right? You, you know that that leaves gaps in the sticker for like gunk and dust to get in there and to allow it to peel up uh, that, that that you know that doesn't work right another one another one check this out check this out um, this uh, danger hot exhaust sticker that goes right here Let's move this guy that goes right here um, as it's shown on the on the instruction sheet it looks like it almost looks like it goes on the top of this exhaust piece which where of course it wouldn't fit in fact it actually goes according to this and the prototype directly over this rear stabilizer fin that's the only space for it and yes that does cover some molded detail and rivets and stuff but one thing that I notice is those uh, those tail stabilizer fins are not actually depicted on the instruction sheets. They're just not there. They're just not there. They're on the toy itself. They're not on the diagram. I love this. I love this. We're not done. I got to do a little bit more on this side. Maybe, maybe I should cut Hasbro some slack, right? Maybe. I should cut them some slack. They have to produce these toys on a budget. They are for adult collectors, not for kids. Kids aren't likely to be playing with this. And, and I should cut them some slack for producing these toys at a reasonable price. And some, some corners had to be cut. I, maybe I should cut them that slack, but I'm not going to. Because what does budget have to do with it? How, how does it make this toy cheaper and more affordable to have the diagram point to the wrong spot for the sticker? How's, how's that saving them money? All right, how, how is that helping Hasbro's budget, right? Um, also, uh, I, I won't cut them slack for that on these modern vehicles nor on vintage vehicles when they were made for children when they were designed to be assembled by children or their parents and then played with won't cut them slack for that because in that era these were meant to be toys they were meant to be played with and while i can understand cost-cutting measures while under i understand 
budgets, uh, not one single child ever got any enjoyment out of Hasbro saving money. Nobody ever looked at the corporate balance sheet and got a smile on his face because Hasbro's books balanced. Uh, that cannot be the standard of a good toy. Yes, a, a toy meant for children should be produced on a reasonable budget to be affordable and fun. But you can cost cut your way out of a good toy. You can cut the costs to the point that, ah, that you no longer have a fun toy. You have a budget piece of junk. And there are lots of toy companies that uh, made profits doing it that way. Lots of those knockoff toys, the ones we kind of make fun of sometimes. You can uh, run a toy company that way if you want to. However, if you want to, you know, use the label G.I. Joe, which has a long and storied history, and if you want to have a higher standard than that, then you get to be held to the higher standard. So it looks like there are some stickers that actually do go on this exhaust piece. Um, yeah, okay. So let's do that. There's one on each side. Ah, oh, there is really not much room to put it there, though. But we're going to do our best. It barely fits. Barely fits. Barely, barely, barely fits. But it does fit. All right, so... Is that all for this side? Let me see. Let me show you this while I'm taking another gander at that. Let's see. We got that, that, that. We got that, 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 that. Okay. All right. I think this side is done. Now we can do the same. See, that side is done. And I even got the, the nose cobra sticker. So now we do the same on this side. I just noticed something else I love about this. On this sticker sheet... There is, this is going to be hard to see, this uh, black text right, right here. It says, all pink color is clear. All pink color is clear. What this seems to mean is that uh, this having a pink backing uh, allows you to see the white letters. They don't want you to think that the the background color of the sticker is pink. It's just the background of the sticker sheet. The color itself, or the backing itself, is clear. Uh, and that would be really helpful. That would help you see the white stickers, the white letters on these stickers on a clear background. But what's missing here, guys? What's missing? It's not pink. Instead, it is this off-white, yellowy color, which makes the white letters nearly invisible. Can you see it? Can you see it? I have to look pretty closely to see it, to see the white letters. So this is what I'm talking about. This is not a budget thing. They could have made the backing pink instead of off-white. They could have made the white letter stickers easier to see. Does that realistically cost them more? Would that realistically have added to the cost of this vehicle? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe engineering better pegs for these missiles might have been a budget buster. As frustrating and annoying as they are, I, I will grant them that. But there are some other issues with this thing that have nothing to do with cutting costs and everything to do with uh i i hate to use the word lazy i think that word is thrown around too much but definitely there's was not enough care 
put into certain aspects of these retro vehicles and could have been could have been done very easily could have been done without any additional cost but they weren't done why were they not done I like the G.I. Joe team that Hasbro has right now for the most part I think they're doing a bang up job I think the classified series is great I think they've done better than expected with the classified series I have to give credit where it's due and in general I think what they're doing with the G.I. Joe brand is really good not only do they have an excellent classified series, there's also a ton, a ton, ton of licensed product out right now. So there's a lot of variety of G.I. Joe product that you can pick up. There's the role-playing game. There are some high-end uh, deluxe figures that you can pick up. Uh, there's like mini figures and vehicles that you can get. You know, they've got things in different scales. There's the the Haslab projects, the Sky Striker with new O-ring figures. So if you wanted O-ring back, you're getting your O-ring back. There's GI Joe and Transformers crossovers, which is not my thing. It's not really my cup of tea, but I know a lot of people do like Transformers and G.I. Joe crossovers. And the Megatron Hiss Tank took absolutely no time at all to sell out. So, you know, there are some folks that want it. I am sure that some of the buyers only picked it up to sell it on the secondary market. But and as much as I, I don't like people not being able to get what they want for the regular retail price, if people are picking up, up something like that to sell it for a higher price on the secondary market, it at least means they expect there to be demand for it on the secondary market. We are, we are almost done here. I think we have only two more. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, but I think we have only two more. And I think I'm going to do the hardest one first. And that's this one that goes on the engine exhaust. Come on. It's so close. Just peel off for me. There we go. So I, I'm not bitter at Hasbro, and I am not one of these guys out here trying to play Monday morning quarterback, and uh, it, and I'm not one of these people who seems to hate all the things that he allegedly loves. I'm not that guy. For the most part, you know, the vast majority of new GI Joe product that's out there, I think, is excellent. I think is excellent. Uh, these retro vehicles, though, are a bit hit and miss. We, we've seen a couple that are not bad, uh, even pretty good, I would say. But this Fang, on the one hand, extra effort went into it, right? They did not just reissue the vintage Fang. They re-engineered and redesigned this thing. Uh, this is is a fatter fang it's like a, a guppy fang um, not quite as thin and spindly as the original they at some point decided if they're gonna reissue the fang they need to make it beefier that's extra effort the retro his tank was basically a straight reissue of the vintage his tank a couple of differences a couple of changes but mostly 
it was a Hiss reissue. This, however, has some new engineering, a whole new body. Basically, no, no reissued parts from the Vintage Fang. Everything is different on this. Even the things that are similar, such as the missiles, are different. They are they are different to fit on new pegs. Pegs that were uh, created specifically for this version of the Fang. Re-engineered pegs for these missiles that work just as badly as the vintage version. This is the last time I'm putting these missiles on. If they fall off again, I am leaving them off. And they will be left off for all eternity because I will never go through the trouble of putting that back on. There's the thing, fully assembled, all the bombs and missiles and junk. Here it is, side by side with the Vintage Fang. Which one is better? Um, I think it's a wash, honestly. The Vintage Fang had some shortcomings. The re There's a reason why the missiles and the roll cage are not on this one, because they are a pain. Um, I, I maybe like the sleeker, thinner design of the body on the Vintage Fang, uh, but the Retro Fang fixes a couple of things. It's a bit chunkier, a bit, uh, a bit sturdier at least the body is. You have the, uh, the red line, you have the color effect of the roll cage on the Vintage Fang, but without having the piece that can come off and break or get lost. So I think that's actually not too bad. The details on the engine, also really good. Uh, details on the, the seat and the joystick, also really good. Remember, the joystick on that vintage helicopter is just a very thin little stick there. That's, there's no detail whatsoever. Um, it has a sticker on the control panel for some control details, and so does this. But uh, maybe a little bit of an improvement on the cockpit there. On the downside is the uh, the landing skids are just as delicate as these. The missiles just as difficult to put on and easy to knock off as on the vintage. So where there could have been improvement, there was not. So for that reason, even though this one has a couple improvements over the vintage version. I still prefer the the body style of the vintage Fang. And again, where there could have been improvement, there wasn't. So I think it's a wash. I think they're both, you know, about on equal footing as far as my personal preference goes. Let's turn our attention now to the figure to the creatively named Cobra Pilot. And this is the figure. It has a blue flight suit. It has a red helmet that is removable. Uh, it may be a little too easy to remove. It doesn't, doesn't stay on too well. He has an air mask with a hose that attaches to the chest. It looks like that air mask is not removable. Yeah, that is molded on. I guess that's fine. You know, one less accessory to uh, to lose. And this is a faceless Cobra Trooper, so who cares really what his face looks like? He's going to be an army builder. Um, the red helmet does not really go with the blue uniform, but I think I actually like that. I mean, it's a little ugly, isn't it? But it's ugly in a way that I find kind of endearing. It's ugly in a way where it looks like a first draft of a vintage figure. A first draft that would have been scrapped and improved upon before release. But it's just that kind of sort of imprecision about it that I kind of dig. 
So I don't think I have a problem with the figure. It looks like he has, yes, he has a removable pistol in this holster. So he does have an extra accessory, a left-handed holster, surprisingly. So apparently all Cobra pilots are left-handed. So there's that. Of course, it is a modern figure with modern articulation and all of that. Uh, modern sculpting. Not bad. The problem I have with this figure is not with the figure itself. It's with, it's with the fact that it has no figure stand. That means they are expecting you to display this figure in the Fang, uh, not outstanding on its own. So, that might be fine. It's a vehicle driver, though, right? So maybe they just want you to put the guy in the vehicle and just leave him in there. Um, but if that's the case, then they would have expected that maybe with the Hiss 3 driver this guy kind of the same blue color as our pilot this guy which included a figure stand maybe they would have expected the same thing with another vehicle driver crankcase with the retro all striker which also came with a figure stand stand so yeah i know it's a vehicle driver and maybe you can just display it in the vehicle but if you want to display it on a figure stand like nearly every other modern gi joe figure sorry you can't it doesn't come with one let's go ahead and put the cobra pilot in the fang so we can properly display him i'm going to take off the helmet because this is going to fall off anyway i'll put it back on when he gets in and oh my gosh okay um Small quality control issue. We have a boot that has come off. He has lost his his leg below the boot line. I can peg it back on. It's loose, though. Okay, so quality control issue. All I was trying to do was bend the leg as is necessary to fit the guy, to fit the legs into those holes uh inside the cockpit and part of his leg came off so um to really do this i think one hand needs to also go on the joystick you can put a vintage figure's hand on the vintage fangs joystick you should also be able to do that with a modern figure oh my god i'm gonna lose a boot inside this thing aren't I you shouldn't be able to do less with a modern figure than with a vintage figure okay there is a back peg for a modern figure on the seat of the fang uh, much like there is a back peg for a vintage figure on the vintage fang I guess he's gonna have to have his legs kind of extended like that in order for me to fit him on and like i said if i knock these missiles off again I, i'm leaving them off forever forever and ever i will never i will never put them back on let's see if i can keep them on then I, i'm genuinely going to try to do this without knocking off the missiles okay i'm trying to line up the figure the the hole on the back of the figure with the peg on the seat and this is proving quite am i supposed to take the feet off am i supposed to take the feet off in order for him to fit in here is that is is it a a feature not a flaw uh almost 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 he's seated all the okay i got it i got it i got it the back peg is in the figure's back. The legs are a bit awkward, but we're going to work with that now. I'm going to try to put the right hand on the joystick so he can fly the fang. Will it work? Will it work? It sort of works. Sort of. So let's put the left hand over here. 
Right hand sort of on the joystick. Ah, uh, I say sort of. That's only sort of. All right, let's try to bend the arm in a more natural pose. Okay. Hey, I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's put the helmet on. Let's put the helmet on, and we will have achieved the impossible. We put the Cobra Pilot in the Retro Fang. It is done. Here we go. We did it. Check that out. Is that not the best thing you've ever seen? That is totally worth all the trouble. And I'm not being entirely sarcastic here. It, it, does, it does look all right fully put together with everything attached. It looks okay. It really doesn't. It's, it looks substantial. One thing that doesn't look great is the screw holes on this side. That's a little unsightly, but hey, we, we can turn it around. We can display it on this side without the screw holes. We can do that. Um, the functionality, oh, that's weird. The ball joint, the, the ball gun on the front, doesn't seem to be a true ball joint. It like, okay, it goes vertical. It, you can twist it and it can go side to side, but it is not, it's not a free ball joint. That you, look, like, look at this. For instance, look at the vintage fang. Here's the vintage fang. Here's the ball gun on the front. That can go any which way you want. You can go around, up and down, side to side. Uh, you can twist it and turn it because it's just a ball resting inside a cup uh, inside the body of the fang, okay? This is different. This doesn't do that. Like, okay, I'm trying to push it this direction. Can't do. Now, if I twist it, then I can move it that way. What have they done? What have they done? I don't know. I would have to... I would have to unscrew this thing and look at it to see why it does that. And this is an unboxing and assembly video. It's not a disassembly video. But you know what? I'm just enough of an asshole to do that. All right. This is going to be extended video because I'm taking this thing apart. It has screws. It's coming apart right now. Okay, I got this screwdriver. No, not that one. This one. I think this screwdriver should work. Uh, we went through all the trouble to put this thing together, and we're just going to tear it apart. But this is this is the value-added stuff you get on this YouTube channel. Your average YouTube guy is just going to put this thing together and complain about it. But no, I am going the extra step here. I'm going to take the screws out and see if we can disassemble this because I've got to know how how they took something as simple as putting a ball inside a cup so that it would move freely like this as simple as this how did they do this basically it just moves on one axis it only moves on one axis and then if you twist it, then you can move it on another axis. So, like, if I want it to move, to move it side to side, I have to kind of twist it. So there seems to be just, like, just a swivel, like, across. So I can move it that way, but I can twist it, and now I can... Well, no. I, if I twist it, the, yeah, now I can move it up and down. How did they do this? This is the this is the simplest possible thing you can do. How did they turn it into something complicated? I've got to know. We're going to find out right now. Yeah, of course the missiles are going to fall. You know, the missiles are going to fall off and just take them off. Take them off. They're going to get in the way. They're just going to fall off anyway. Just get get Now they now they want to stick on. Now they want to stay on tightly. Uh, come on. Okay. There. Missiles off. Of course they're going to stay on tightly when I want to remove them. Okay, let's see. Let's find the screw. Let's find the screw. Uh, I can't see. There it is. Okay. All right, we are taking this screw out. I'm going to use the box tray. Put them in there so I can keep track of them. All right. 
There, there's one. Next. Oh, no, we've got another one here toward the front. Let's move, remove the bomb to get all the extra bits out of the way. I would take off the blade too, but that is on a mushroom clip and that might break it. I'm, if it's possible to reassemble this, I will, but I'm not bothered. I am going to have to peel this front Cobra sticker up a bit in order to take this apart. If it'll even come apart. I don't know that it'll come apart. It may be assembled in such a way that it will not come apart. But if it, if it doesn't, I'm going to show this anyway. I'm not going to edit this out. It's, it's entirely possible that these pieces it has in the center kind of straddling the halves of the helicopter, like the front seat and the engine uh, and the landing skids, they may hold the thing together even when it's unscrewed. I don't know if this will even work, but we're doing it anyway. Did I get that one? No, I didn't. Let's do it. The, the screws are coming out. It, it's not that hard to unscrew, but let's see if it'll actually come apart. It certainly isn't showing any gaps or any split down the center with these screws unscrewed. So, I don't know. This one is one to be a butthead and not fall out. Come on. I think it's completely undone. It's just sort of, it's just sort of wedged in there. All right, come on. All right, come on. It's it's loose. It's out. It just doesn't want to fall out. Come on. All right, let's just move on. Let's just move on. Are these trapped screws? I'm not sure. But they, ah, there we go. No, no. They come out. This one's just being a butthead and not wanting to come out. It's it's loose. It's totally unscrewed. It's It's got to be. But it is, oh, there it is. There it goes. Got it. Uh, let's see. Last one. Last one at the tail. Once I do this, then I will use the, the tweezers to peel up the Cobra sticker at the front. Um, I'll see if I can just peel it off and put it back on the vinyl sticker sheet so I can have some hope of, of replacing it. Uh, all right, let's try not to damage it. I just need the tiniest edge there. And these vinyl stickers are more forgiving. Oh, I should have I could have used a heat source to melt the the glue, but I didn't think of that. But it's okay. It's off already. I'm just going to put it there on the corner. Put this over here. All right. All the screws are out. Let's see if we can split this thing. And there is a gap here at the front. Is there a gap toward the back? Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Uh, this may have some clasps or clips or something. Oh, there's another sticker. I need to remove this bottom sticker that I complained about so much. This is, this is riveting stuff here. W why would you want to watch your Law and Order, or your Murder, She Wrote, or whatever TV show, when you could be watching this. You could be watching this. Let's carefully place that back on the sticker sheet so I can peel that back up and put it back on. If I can get it, this thing reassembled, who knows? Okay, so we're gonna carefully 
work this apart. Hopefully, all the way apart. Oh, there we go. Okay. There's the ball jointed thing. Um, I don't think I need to take the rest of this apart because this is what I actually wanted to see. I see. I see. Okay, so this is what they've done. This is what they've done. So they have the cannon coming through to the back end of the gray ball, and there is just a slot in it. Just let me see if I can do it. It just moves from side. Oh, yeah, okay, just this tab then. The tab, okay, so it moves like this. This tab only moves from side to side, all right? Only like that, okay? And this tab goes in this little notch right here. So um, basically it's fixed like that, right? It's fixed and it only moves from side to side, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, round, it's a round knob there, right? That's a, a round post. So if you turn it like that, then this slot is in the up and down position. So now it will move up and down. So that's how they did it. This is completely unnecessary. And I don't want to hear anything about cost cutting or budgets or anything like that. They had to do extra engineering to do this, right? They had to mold extra parts in order to make this happen, to make it less functional than a simple gray ball in the cup in the body with a red uh, gun barrel stuck on the end of it. This simple, cost-effective, more functional, this extra parts, extra engineering, less functional, Genius, guys. Genius. That was the unboxing and assembly of the Walmart-exclusive Retro Cobra Fang. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for those wondering, yes, I did get it reassembled. I did put the missiles back on. I did put the pilot back in. It can be reassembled even after taking out the screws. And uh, I know I complain about this a lot. There's a lot to complain about. But I have to admit, I feel better. This is very cathartic. I got to get a lot of my frustrations out. I, I feel like a million bucks. So I got to hand it to uh, Hasbro for that. Uh, taking out my frustrating uh, frustrations, building this thing actually made me feel better. This is, is therapy. Not the kind of toy therapy that you would expect, but it actually works. So should you buy this thing and uh, take it out of the box and assemble it? It's certainly up to you. You've got to make your own judgment call. If you want a, a good toy that a child could play with, this is not it. If you're wanting a good display piece for an adult collector, well, you know, you might want to glue the missiles on. Um, it'll be more than a little frustrating to assemble. So again, it depends on what's important to you. But are you feeling down? Are you feeling low? Are you feeling a little frustrated with life? And you just you just want to take it out on something? This is not a bad idea. For therapeutic purposes, I absolutely recommend the G.I. Joe Retro Collection Walmart exclusive Cobra Fang. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Blah, blah, blah. Be right back sometime soon. Blah, blah, blah. G.I. Joe. Only G.I. Joe. Yada, yada. See you next time.